Cotabato, southern Philippines, August 19, 1976. A town shattered and shocked by the biggest natural disaster the Philippines has ever suffered. This was the scene two days after an earthquake struck without warning and brought sudden death and destruction to a large area of the country. From the air, the pattern of devastation was appalling. Huge swathes of mud covered areas where fishermen's homes once stood. Whole communities disappeared, literally wiped off the face of the earth by a moving wall of water that was 30 feet high. 1,000 dead, 4,000 missing, probably dead, and nearly 2,000 injured. Pagadian, 80 miles northwest of Cotabato, lies on the Gulf of Moro and took the full force of the tidal waves. Good morning everyone, this is by Angela Samad and I am here to conduct an interview for the survivor and witnesses of the tragedy of Moro Gulf earthquake and tsunami in 1976. Forty-five years ago, a strong earthquake take place with a 7.8 magnitude, followed by a giant tsunami that almost drowned the entire land. This tragedy took many lives, destroyed the livelihood of people, and shattered the dreams and hearts of the people whom it struck. I am here now to interview the people who survived this shocking phenomenon and to query them about what they have been through before and after the tsunami. Zubaida Lauban. Mr. Blazido, kan po aking pangalan. Tungkol sa tsunami, hindi ko po nalaman yun kasi nandun po kami sa Ligwas and March noong panahon ng Sakuna. Eighteen. Ah, twenty-six years siguro. Secret. <laughs> sinyo na, sinyo na. Umabot na po sa sixty-four years old na ako. Sige, pisa pinansaran. Pinansaran o pinagindaw na noon. Ngayon, uh, pinansaran tatubla. Kung po kami sa Ligwas and March, no? Oh, oh. Ang lakas talaga doon sa Ligwas and March. Ang lakas masyado kasi nag nagpupo kami doon sa kuwan, sa buhang. Eh. At kailalim ka, dalawang kamay ko at saka yung tukod ko kapag yanin ng lindol. Yung mga lupa at saka kwan doon, halos uh, lumalabas sa ibabo ng mga kwan. Maraming mga isdang lumalabas dahil sa lakas ng lindol. Hindi ko matanda ba, pero mataka yung pagyag ninyo. Awan ko lang, mga yun, minuto yun. Kung hindi ako nagkamali, ma medyo matagal-tagal din. Ah, Alala ko siguro mga 12 yun o 1, hating gabi. Mga 4.30 in, in the morning siguro yan. Marami. Lahat ng ari-arian namin doon na nasira, sa bahay nasira. Napakaraming mga produkto ang napinsala tulad ng mga pananim, mga hayo at iba't ibang uri ng mga hanap buhay. Pagkatapos ng lindol ba eh, lahat ng mga tao ay siyempre nalungkot kasi nawalan sila ng mga hanap buhay, maraming mga hayop na namatay, at siyempre medyo nasyak ang mga tao dahil sa lakas ng lindol. Oh. Oh, kasi yung pagkatapos ng lindol na malakas, nagkatras yung tubig, dagat. Tapos doon, pumagsak na yun. Mataas pa siguro sa nyug yun. Kasi takot kami doon, hindi ko mapansin masyado. Takot kami sa kwan, sa paligid ng bundok. Kasi pagpunta kami sa bundok. 
Matagal yan. Yung pagbaba ng tubig, matagal. Pagbaba. Marami. Kasi na yung mga bahay namin. Mga ari-arian ng asawa ko. Masira. Tapos marami na matay pa. Ang kaibigan. Kaanak ng asawa ko. A pleasant morning to you all. I am Abedin Malaha. And so according to the two we interviewed, they shared their experiences and what they witnessed during that disaster. One interviewee answered straightforwardly in which case you can see how simple her answer is. But you can also see in her that she remembers what happened during those times. And the second interviewee was really detailed in sharing his experiences. That no matter how long the time has passed, they will never forget every detail of what happened. I am glad that they shared what they experienced. With those thoughts in my mind, it terrifies me. What if I was in the situation? What should I have done? They were so brave to overcome it despite the damage it did to them. Destroyed casualties, loss of lives, and so on. All I can think of right now is that each one of us should always be prepared because anytime a disaster might come. Therefore, we should always take care of ourselves, be healthy so that we will be able to help ourselves and might lend our hand to others. And this shows that no matter what a person's standard of living, material things are not necessary because at the end of the day, we only have ourselves. We have nothing else to think about but how we can save ourselves and our loved ones from disasters. And let's not forget to just trust the one who created us. So that would be all. Again, this is Abedin Maleha and thanks for watching.